When I finally got to the spot, I saw the killer whales, and I didn't see a lot of action, a lot of splashing, a lot of surface behavior, and then I just knew almost right away that the calf had already been killed. In 10 years of studying transients, Nancy has never been this close to them after a kill. She's about to witness something very rare. They start feeding on the tongue. At over 200 kilos, it can be a meal in itself. They seem to be working together as a group and probably sharing the prey. There's some indication that maybe one killer whale will hold on to the carcass while others will pull parts away from that one whale. We have no idea what they are doing down there with the carcass, how deep they take it, what are they doing down there. Suddenly, these usually silent hunters have a lot to say. Normally, transients are pretty silent underwater because they don't want their prey to be alerted to their whereabouts. So when I hear something or hear their calls underwater, it's really exciting. And with recordings like these, someday we might figure out what they're trying to say. They may be expressing excitement over the kill or arguing how to divide the prize. Deciphering the sounds of killer whales was pioneered by John Ford. Wow, very strange. That is amazing. That's great, those are two calls that are really typical of transients. They're used kind of at a low volume to keep animals in touch with one another when they're foraging or, or just swimming. He can identify the type of killer whale simply by hearing its call. Each call is specific to each killer whale group. That's classic, classic <laughs> transient. Uh -huh. that, that raw burst of, of, of uh, uh, noise, basically, a, a pulse burst. Much of the transient feeding behavior is still a mystery. How often do these big kills happen? And how critical are they to the killer whale's survival? One gray whale calf supplies so much food for all the killer whales, so it's probably real important for them to feed like that. And eventually, if the gray whale numbers keep decreasing, then the killer whales would be expected to decrease too. Is it a shortage of food, or what's in their food that threatens them? It would be a cruel irony if the mammals they hunt so relentlessly are poisoning them. Now that the transients are back, Nancy is anxious to assess their health. The only way to do this is by taking blubber samples with a dart gun. We don't know how much toxins are in the tissues of the killer whales in this area because it really hasn't been done yet. Given this information about K&L pod and how, how their toxics are pretty high, we really want to know what's happening with the transients, but that's really important to find out. It's not easy hitting these fast-moving targets. Nancy's second try is on the mark. That's a really good sample, isn't it? Yeah, that's it? a good one. Wow. And that's the blubber right there on the tip. Uh, that's the blubber. It will take weeks for the results to come back. Toxins like PCBs become more concentrated as they work their way up the food chain. The danger is greatest for animals at the very top. Killer whales are the top predators, so I think they're a really important indicator species for a lot of different things that are happening in the environment. 
They're just so interwoven in the whole food chain. Biggest of blow I was pointing at. He's headed straight for the two killer whales. Right there, there's a blow, right there. Straight ahead. It's a race to capture a full-blown hunt. The teamwork, the strategies, the skill, the very essence of the transient killer whale. The killer whales were circling the prey, and I think in the high waves and in the swells that were going up and down, they were having a hard time locating the sea lion. Killer whale to the left, Paul. For a moment, crew and predators all scan the surface of the bay, searching for the same quarry. Oh, spy hop, double spy hop. Where's the sea lion now? Oh, the sea lion's right here next to us. Right here. It's on the side now. When you're filming killer whales and the prey swims over to your boat and tries to hide under your boat, then your worst nightmare has materialized. You can't help but sympathize with the prey, a terrified sea lion. But what about the killer whales? Out there is a family of animals with little calves that need food. They work so hard for a meal. How do you get out of this? Well, in our case, our rule is one uh, of non-interference. When this animal started to jump into the boat, we knew we had to move the boat. We knew we had to just get out of there. You can jump right in the boat. Okay, he's gone. He's not with us now. Yeah, he must be over to the right, maybe by the killer whales. The killer whales are being really quiet. Really, really quiet. For the sea lion, the silence is ominous. Suddenly, as though some signal were given, all hell broke loose. The pod is all females with inexperienced and vulnerable calves. The prey is a 300 kilo bull sea lion, capable of severely injuring a killer whale. The adult whales must immobilize it as quickly as possible. Females deliver powerful blows with their tail flukes, pummeling the feisty bull. The sea lion shows amazing resilience, but in the end it can't match the killer whales. Battered and exhausted, its resistance is over. Working together, the killer whales force their prey deep below the surface. They will hold it there until it drowns. Soon the ocean is alive with the raucous sounds of killer whales. This may have been their first good meal for a long time, but how healthy a meal was it? Nancy has at last received the results from her darting samples. 
the news is grim. The transients of Monte Rey have alarming levels of the toxic PCBs. When I got the results back from the killer whale samples, I was really surprised. I knew they were going to have PCBs in them, but I never imagined that they would be this high. And the scientists told me that the killer whales off our coast are some of the most toxic of all the marine mammals. No one knows for certain what effect these poisonous chemicals will have and how quickly they act. The very intricacy of life in the sea makes it difficult to predict and hard to protect. We set out to make a film about a different race of killer whales, but we came away with much more than that. We ended up discovering through Nancy's research that we may be faced with losing these magnificent animals forever. For Nancy Black, her research on the transient killer whales of Monte Ray Bay goes on, but now with an increased sense of urgency. Time may be running out. <laughs>